when will I be able to lease my Model 3? That's a question a lot of people ask, including myself. I prefer to lease my cars for many different reasons that I explain in other videos. Uh, but now we have an answer straight from Elon Musk. I'll tell you what it is. Also, are there more people making reservations for Model 3 right now or canceling their reservations? for Model 3 right now. Well, there's also educated guest there that comes from this research firm called Second Measure. I'll tell you what it is. And also, Elon Musk says we'll have a new interior color in Tesla's next year. I'll give you, I'll give you a clue. If, uh, if Pravda was printed in color, that would be it. We're gonna talk about it all and also comment of the day coming up next. All right, welcome to those of you who are watching me on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And of course, if you're watching me in replay on YouTube, please consider subscribing so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, let's talk about um, Model 3. Now, as um, most of you who watch my channel know that I prefer to lease my cars, um, I believe, I don't believe, math believes uh, that it's cheaper. Um, if you're somebody who wants to keep your car for just three years um, and kind of get rid of it and get another one, you know, so it's still under warranty. So you have the, like, the latest safety features and, 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 and so forth. Um, and you don't drive like crazy mileage over 20,000 miles a year, really. Um, then leasing your car is a, just a bit better financial uh, option. Uh, watch that video that I made about it. Um, it's in my library. Now, however, as you know, you can lease a Model 3 right now. I know it's been on sale for about a year, but you can't. And that's because it um, doesn't get Tesla as much money up front when people lease it um, as it does if people purchase it or finance it, which is kind of the same thing to them, really. Um, and that's why, of course, they're trying to make as much money as possible right now, and that's why they don't offer it. Well, uh, Elon Musk just tweeted a reply, actually, uh, to uh, one of the questions, I forget from whom, I don't know who this guy is, actually. He asked any news on lease options, and uh, Elon said that basically they're gonna offer it sometime around six to nine months from now. That's a long time. Um, like he also mentioned that it's gonna be at least six months until we're gonna see the $35,000 option for the Model 3. Um, so maybe that will kind of coincide together. Um, and now, he b- believes that loan financing is a better deal anyway. I think it's a better deal for you, Elon, not for people like myself. Uh, it is a much better for us to lease. I lease both of my Teslas all right now and I'm planning to continue leasing cars in the future. I've done my math, it is cheaper uh, for my and many other people's uh, scenario. But here, here you have it. Um, now, it looks like if uh, his estimation is correct, which a lot of times it isn't, uh, but let's just go with six months. Um, that's where the $35,000 Tesla is gonna be, Tesla Model 3 is gonna be out, but also this is where they're gonna be able to lease them. At that time, most likely we won't have a full tax credit here in the United States. It will be cut in half by then. It looks by by January. So people won't be able to take advantage of everything they want to take advantage of. Like, of course, I wanted to take advantage of $35,000 model uh, lease. And on top of that, of course, I wanted to get a full tax credit. It's not going to happen, looks like. And if it does happen, it's probably going to happen to a very tiny number of people. Um, Now, Tesla was smart enough from the very beginning to advertise this car at $35,000, not at $25,000 after rebates. So I think they're okay there, but at least now we know it is a six month wait. So um, that's, uh, you know, that's unfortunate, but at the same time, I understand. Uh, And that way, at least we know, and we can make our own financial decisions and purchasing decisions moving forward. Yes, and so actually Trevor in the chat room here on Patreon says, that's the question that Elon Dodge at the conference call. I thank you, Trevor, for reminding me. That's exactly right. One of the two questions that he decided were what? We we call him boneheaded or something like that. It wasn't boneheaded at all. The guy was asking him about the quality of the, um, of the, Q, I think, um, and and also about the obviously the plans for um, things like leasing. So yeah, that's correct. It actually uh, perfectly segues me to the next second segment because he did Elon Musk did dodge a question about the quality of the reservation list, um, and now we kind of have a clue of what it is. Now before I tell you what it is, let me just remind you that this show in this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for uh, Tesla. If uh, you're shopping there. 
there in the next few days or even weeks. Grab the discount code in the description of the video so you can save a few bucks. I actually just posted a review video for one of the products that they have. I posted it yesterday, which was Sunday. All right, let's move on to another thing that's kind of important. Now, uh, we've always been wondering, well, what is the quality of the reservation list? Are there more people, you know, adding their names to the list or are a lot of people leaving? Okay, now, we kind of have an answer and this is the chart from the company is called second measure uh, what they do is that they uh they get access to all of this data from credit card transactions from banking transactions and so forth and they analyze it for different companies and so forth now when they analyze this data for model three uh, reservations and and cancellations because most of it is done by credit card because that's how you you do that um and uh they came up with a number saying that right now uh 23 of people have canceled their reservation I'm assuming up this up to date. <laughs> um, and um, they said when they originally tracked it, I think it was at 11% and that kind of co coincided with what Tesla was reporting. Tesla now is saying that no, we, this, is, this is not what numbers would we have. But of course they wouldn't give us the numbers because that's right, Trevor, he, uh, Elon Musk dodged uh, the question about that as well at the conference call, which we, we really wanted to know. What is the quality observation list? Now, Here's another graph that they, uh, now, okay, let's look at this graph. So the one in the ye uh, yellow, uh, orange, whatever, uh, it's the number of cancellations right now. The blue is the number of uh, uh, new, uh, new reservations. As you can see, it's like quadruple. Um, in the beginning, I know they done a very weird uh, way to do this chart. They actually did it at like 100% being the original month of May. Not a cool way to do a graph, but still this is a better visual representation than not having it um this again this is by second measure um so now there's four times as many cancellations um okay but the the, the total is still claim uh tesla is claiming that's 450,000 people are still on the list as you can see the the uh, here in april there's um you know at, at this point about 23 percent of cancellations and the purchase teslas and reservation holders so it looks like they're still going strong um yes it is kind of a concern but to be honest with you well all all the trouble that they had and with all the kind of competition that they're having uh, especially this year by the end of this year 23 percent of cancellations is not bad at all don't forget people were reserving this car sight unseen it was two years ago they didn't know what their financial situation was no, obviously they didn't know what the delays were and delays are relatively significantly uh significant because you know people who are trying to kind of target their original date of uh, when they could get a Model 3, um, probably time their other leases and purchases. And when that didn't uh, come to reality, I'm sure they just had to move on. So I would say 23% is not bad at all, especially that they're still getting reservation. What is concerning is that obviously there are more people canceling than they're reserving. But I think once more and more showrooms are going to have this car in there, once more and more people purchase it and their friends see it, I don't see how this car is not going to be an absolute 100% hit. But nevertheless, this is pretty interesting. All right, there's another thing uh, that Elon Musk tweeted about. About, and I guess somebody was asking about new interior, uh, specifically red a leather interior um, for Teslas, and he said that it's going to be available next year. Now, right now, you, we, we do have some examples of the aftermarket um, uh, modifications where you can see uh, what it would look like. Here's one of them. This is from T Sport Line. This is a company in the lay that do really, really cool modifications to Teslas. Um, if you go to their social media, especially Instagram, you'll see this picture and many other Teslas with the red interior like this. Now, that doesn't mean that this is, will be the particular color. I think this is a little bit too Bentley-ish. Uh, but, um, and I'm sure that's what they were going for, but um, that would be interesting to see what Tesla does with this and how they kind of do different accents and stuff like like that because this is pretty bold it, it doesn't look as contrasty on the white one and you can see that in their instagram as well uh, but um definitely an interesting choice so in addition i guess we'll have a white and a red one uh in most teslas next year so that's that's pretty exciting that's that's very cool um all right now let's move on to the comment of the day and today the comment of the day comes from jim steel he, uh, I mean, of course, we had a lot of stories about self-driving cars uh, um, in the last couple of months with a lot of unfortunate accidents uh, with Tesla and Uber and some other ones. Um, Jim says, I don't understand this fascination with self-driving cars. I wouldn't trust any driverless car unless the AI driving was intelligence as human being with vision system to match. Okay, few things. Um, I don't know if you know about human beings much, but these dudes, they are 
not very good at it. 40,000 people die just in the United States from people not knowing how to drive well. As a matter of fact, if you drive around for like 10 minutes, you'll see a lot of people who probably should not have their driver license, much less be operating these killing machines out there in public. So I wouldn't set humans as a good example of, or it's very low, low bar, I would say. Secondly, uh, the self-driving cars, they pretty much already better than us. You know, just the fact that they only killed, what, like two or three people, and that's even questionable whose fault it was. Technically, I would say no people were killed as a direct failure of a self-driving car. Um, I would say that it's a pretty good record already. Uh, they definitely can see better than us. They definitely don't text or or sing or fall asleep. So they're already better than us. The, the, I think the problem is that you might be under the impression of what you get from uh, a lot of media that only cover, obviously, when an accident happens. And when an accident happens with Uber or Tesla exciting cars. But when self-driving features wor work as design and drive like millions and millions millions of miles, uh, no one's going to make a, a new story about it, right? So right now, did you know that in Arizona, you know, actually Waymo uh, performing as a very successful test of, 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 their, um, of their fleet with absolutely no drivers behind the seat, no problems ever. Uh, and it, it gets better and better and better. But just so you know, yeah, they are already better than us. So I think you should definitely reconsider and, and just look at the statistics and you'll see that this is moving very fast. And maybe if you're not comfortable right now, in a couple of years, it's going to be way, way further ahead where it is right now. And you really need to stop concentrating on negative media. And when, when you actually look at this accident, look at who's in fault and look if there are some key facts that are missing. Uh, which a lot of times they are from the reports because when you see uh, Tesla and autopilot crashes and kills people, well, you know, maybe you read the article and see if these people were actually being, you know, absolutely careless and they were driving around high speed uh, and crashed themselves and they just, this particular idiot just happened to be in a Tesla and had nothing to do with, with the autopilot. And when it does, they're still misusing it. Uh, but Look at companies like uh, Waymo, they are way ahead of everybody. They are doing a really good job. And I think that, if I, I, I dare I say, they're much better than all of us right now. So that's what I'm gonna say about it. Of course, I'm interested in hearing your opinion about it as well. Uh, feel free to reply. The rest of you, please chime in. That uh, is an ongoing conversation, of course, and I love having it. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. That's all I got. So hopefully I will see you guys uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. live on Patreon. If you haven't uh, supported me on Patreon, so I would really appreciate it. Um, uh, Patreon.com slash e4electric. See you there tomorrow. And of course, I'll repost the video immediately on YouTube. Other than that, please remember to stay charged.